they but you're will. basically living off of the land when you're out there. No. Uh, to be honest, we living off the land is something that we do when we go out on these like ceremonial hunts or when we go out on expeditions to like really uncharted places. We like we practice that. Mm-hmm. We and 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 the elders in the community, like we lost like the 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 guy who used to do the ayahuasca ceremonies in JJ's community, like we lost him during COVID. But it's like he knew things, he knew methods that the younger generation doesn't know. Like they have they have TikTok just like everybody else. They like, have TikTok. Yeah. Dude, I told you, gold miners follow me on Instagram. Like, it's like, and, and that's a security risk for me. Yeah. Like, but like, JJ's father once apparently killed an electric eel, removed the nerve. And again, I don't know anatomically if this makes any sense, but this is how the lore goes that he killed the electric eel, removed the nerve that generates the electricity, then cut his own arm open, put the nerve in it, and slapped a dead frog on top of it. And then bandaged that up. And he said that that would give him strength until the end of his days. And he lived 87 <laughs> years old, alive in the jungle and healthy. And he died one day at a barbecue just like, he just like leaned over on his grandson, smiled and died. Whoa. He was like healthy until he died. He just turned off. Huh. Yeah. So like, they they do stuff. They, they, they have, um, I had a, I was doing some stuff with tigers in India and I picked up a disease called tularemia and I had this horrible patch of pus on my elbow and I went to every doctor I came home from India went to doctors in New York and for two months I was like in bed and I had no energy and I they put me on this antibiotics and that and this and that and these again like New York City infectious disease doctors couldn't heal this thing I went to the Amazon JJ takes my arm looks at it and goes oh so bad look at this he goes come with me we go into the jungle. He cuts a tree, takes the sap, says, drink some of this, not too much. He was like, one drop of this down your throat. I felt like it was going to close my throat. And then he took the rest of the sap and he rubs it onto the wound. And this is like a disgusting, pussy thing that had been plaguing me for months. It was better the next day. Really? It's better the next day. He knew which tree to go to. Now think about how many thousands of years are needed or at least centuries are needed in order for him to have that knowledge. How many people living out in the jungle had to try how many things to have that medicinal knowledge handed down through the generations and then to be in the presence of a person that has that type of knowledge and to have access to it and to witness it working. And what specifically does that sap work on? Does it work on all kinds of infections and diseases or just the kind that you had? No. So we actually brought, we, you know, tested it in a Petri dish and basically um, there's some of these saps that just murder infections. Like you, you can't get this bacteria to live with these saps. Uh, so like people use like neos, like we don't use neosporin in the jungle. Like it doesn't work. What we do is we, we go to the Sangre de Drago tree. Like that works. As soon as I see like a little something, like a mosquito bite that just doesn't look right and is like to get too much of my attention, just go and put that on it. And immediately gone. One time I wow. like, I slashed myself with a machete. I had this huge wound. I like... You know, I was thinking, oh, God, this is going to get so infected. And then JJ was, nah, just drown it in that stuff. You'll be fine. And, like, it, you, you won't get infections. Wow. There's, like, miracle shit down there. And is this widely known? Is this something that the scientific community is aware of? I mean, B- botanists it's and- yes and no. Um, I think, God, what was it, Captopril? They made from, from Bushmaster Venom in the 1990s. And I think that, I think it was Pfizer. I don't know who it was. One of those companies made, like, you know, a few billion dollars off of it. But what happens is... People will discover a compound in the Amazon and then export it. You know, it'll be like, you know, thousands of years of wisdom from ancient cultures handed down. And then someone will give that knowledge out to a, to a, to a corporation and then they'll take it, profit off of it, and then that's it. But it's like we, at this point, one of the things we're trying to do is work with the indigenous communities to try and help them to preserve that knowledge. Because mm. we're also seeing now that as the roads come in and you have the problems with the fires and it's changing, you know, at the edge, at the edge where the jungle is, is, is being destroyed. They, the younger people have to decide, do they want to live the way their parents lived? Fishing, hunting howler monkeys, eating howler monkeys. Or do they want to go out into the world and do something else? And it's like, well, then you start with like, well, what else? You know, it's like, it's very, very complex being at the edge of living in like a tribal subsistence community and then being confronted with like the modern world. And they have like a cell phone. And there's definitely a feeling, you can definitely see a feeling of like being like left out. Like they feel like, oh, we're just sitting here in a river. Mm. Whereas like I feel like 
people from our world would go like, God, they have it perfect. They have all the fish they could ever want. You know, have you ever taken jungles. someone from there and taken them on a trip to New York City? I mean, they, I guess they don't have passports. Um, well, some of my guys, some of the guys on my team, like that run Jungle Keepers, are like super native, but also kind of worldly. Like one of my guys, this guy Roy, he's a conservation chef, and he's like almost famous. He's been to Italy, he's been to Virginia. He like, but he runs Jungle Keepers. JJ, I mean, speaks perfect English and like does interviews with me on like ABC News and like, so like these guys have. Roy came to New York City. Um, dude, the craziest one is this guy. There's a story about an anthropologist. I think some, uh, I think it was Kenneth Good. I can't remember what his name was, but he, he went to the Yanomami, married one of them, brought them to the U S she couldn't handle it. Cause she was like, I want to go back to the jungle, but they had had kids together. And I heard this legend like when I was a kid and then that she had gone back to the jungle, but that this anthropologist had had like Yanomami children that he raised on his own in the U S and then last year I was at a dinner party and I met David Good, who is that guy. He's the kid. And so now he's going back to his people in the Yanomami villages. Yeah. He went to go back. He had to go find his mother. And the first time he saw her, she was naked. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I was sitting at like a dinner party and he was like, yeah, this was uh, this. So was, his uh, mother had abandoned yeah. him to go back to the jungle. He's raised by his father. The anthropologist. And then how old was he when he went back to see his mother? I think he was in his 20s. Wow. And he had to go on an expedition up a river the into the jungle. Seen her. How old was he? I think when he was a little kid. I don't think she lasted long. I don't think she liked our way of life. She wow. wanted to go back. Yeah. And so now he's he's doing his PhD. He's, he's awesome. Like he could sit here with us and like he's doing his PD, PhD on uh, the Yanomami microbiome. Uh, I think that's his mother. And he's studying their gut fauna. Because wow. their rates of cancer, their rates of disease, their rates of depression, of course are like nothing compared to ours. And so he's launching this massive study right now to do, to find out why are they so healthy and why are we so fucked up? I but, think it'd be easier to find out why we're so fucked up. <laughs> but yeah, he's, he's got a crazy, crazy story. The, the, the way they have an understanding of their environment and the plants and what to eat and what not to eat is just, yeah. I would, imagine talking if you could speak their language and like be immersed with them for a long time and get an understanding of what they know it must be amazing well the great thing is that he he can that's that's what makes him so interesting